Hey, welcome to bonus action, a duels and mana dork supplement podcast. I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. And we are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. And today, we have the bearded GM himself. Hello. Hi. And welcome to what we are officially dubbing the second bonus action, as we're calling it. Uh, cool. Even though we've definitely interviewed a ton of people before, but that was just kind of like its own thing. Yeah. Its own we, thing. Were, we were young and inexperienced. Uh, and now we're slightly older and still inexperienced. Very, mu very much so. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for those know. of you that don't know who you are, please tell us tell us a little bit about yourself for the audience. Uh, if you don't know who I am, that's fine. You really, there's really no reason you should know who I am. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> humility. Well, let's let's play along a little bit. Okay. Fine. That? Okay. No. Um, I'm the very GM. Uh, I got. Uh, you find me on pretty much every form of social media that is really, I guess, relevant because uh, I've got a few ones. But my my real uh, main home is TikTok, where I was able to start an account a few years ago, start talking about some D and D stuff. For some reason, some people were like, "Hey, let's follow this guy," and I like listening to what he has to say. They like the cut of my jib. Not sure why, but here I am. You know, yeah. they don't like listening to us on TikTok per se. I mean. We don't do a lot of talking. Yeah. We do mostly... I do a lot of memes. We do memes. We do a ton of bits. A lot of bits. Almost exclusively bits. And we're actually... This This is all... This whole thing. This whole thing is our initiative to try and not just do bits anymore. We're trying to be less bitty. Yeah. Yeah. So, we... One thing that we usually ask, just kind of generally, uh, particularly people in the TTRPG space, how did you get into the tabletop RPG? Um, the Dungeons well, and Dragons, actually, whatever you started with. Yeah, well, I started with with D and D five E. Like that was the first tape T T T R B G I ever played. Um, the reason why is because uh, I'd heard about it for years. I had like you know seen it and like you know uh, popular media, like how it's the the butt of the joke, and people who play D and D are the ultimate nerds and all that kind of stuff. And I was like. Mm. Oh, it's a nerdy thing. So what is it? And then, you know, I hear more about it. It's like, it's a game where you, you get a character sheet you, and you use your imagination. And you, you pretend with your friends and you go on adventures together and you, you get fake you, you get imaginary money and you defeat imaginary dragons. And I'm just like, that's nerdy because that sounds like really cool. That sounds like a really <laughs> fun time. Like, that's, is that a bad thing? Are we not cool with that? Like, <laughs> well, you can be cool with it and then also not cool. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. But. That before would, this, you were just like the, 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 the height of popularity. Before this, <laughs> really, yeah. it was the downfall of, of major, major jock energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greg was like the most popular guy. Then he started playing D and D. Now I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, he was like he was so awesome, and then he like overnight he just started wearing zip ups and beer and it got really bearded and then just was like a fucking idiot online not that we would know anything about that no i love i love that we're all wearing the uniform though yeah, right. that's really <laughs> that's really fantastic <laughs> so no, but, uh you know well basically what happened was that uh, i'd heard about it for years and then eventually uh new year's eve 2016 um i was with some friends, and a friend uh, of a friend was there, and that I heard this guy, he's like, oh, he runs D&D. &D. And I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to play that. He's like, cool, we should do a thing sometime. And then, like, 30 minutes later, he's like, hey, you just want to run a one-shot tonight? And I was like, what? what? <laughs> what you can do that? And he, like, there's no... You know, well, I didn't know what the process was. I was new to all this. Yeah. And so, he just set up a thing real quick. We played, like, a real quick thing. It was a couple hours. We played until midnight, so... 2017 rolls around, yay! And I was like, oh, this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly. Ever, I, people always think that D&D &D is like this, like, it can be this big involved thing, but it really is just... I mean, it's a lot to do. Um, yeah, the perception of it, of course, you know, you have the ritual where you have to set up the pentagram and the candles. Yes. In real life, you Sacrifice just, the baby. Yes. Yeah. In, in real life, you just have to get people to understand uh, the 20 different skill. I don't actually know how many skill, uh, skills there are, and the six different abilities, and tell them what their armor class is, and then you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. As long as you can do the math for them quickly. That's fine. Well, and that was actually what saved uh, my bacon for it, was that like my friend was like, hey, go to, go to the App Store, go to your Google whatever, 
download this specific app. It was a uh, fifth edition character sheet uh, app. And he said, go ahead and just pay for the thing. It's like four bucks. Just pay for it. And I'm like, all right, fine. So I paid for it. Uh, I don't, and I'm one of those cheapos. I don't like paying for apps. I will buy like food. I will buy clothing. But if it comes to like two dollars on an app, I'm like, <laughs> not today, sucker. <laughs> One ninety nine um, for a fucking application on my phone. Go to hell. Like, dude, I'm gonna thing- buy a forty dollar pack of Magic: The Gathering. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing I touch <laughs> every day, and I'm constantly holding, and I'm gonna buy an app for it. <laughs> when will yeah, I okay. use it? <laughs> you can find a free one. It's probably a free one that does ninety eight percent. Should be a free one somewhere. But no, yeah, 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 there was an app for for um, character sheets, and so I, I downloaded that, and I was like, oh. And so when I first learned, I didn't do the hand, paper and pen thing. I was like, I just learned by the app, and so the numbers made no sense to me for a little bit. <laughs> God, that's classic. That is classic. Now, ever since you've 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 branched off and you've gone into some other. TTRPGs in the realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know you participated in like Monster of the Week, um, and you even you've even been uh, doing a lot with this. What is it? Or Orzak? Oh, oh, I can never pronounce it. The, 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 the narrative Orzak universe. Narrative discourse. universe. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mister Tell- Mr. Kurt Wise has like officially made an official book for it now, and it exists. You can get the PDF on on itch.io. Uh, uh, io. Um, it's the narrative universe on there, or the mm. N-U-T-T-R-P-G, or as people affectionately refer to it as the Nut RPG. <laughs> um, not kidding. Not, that has become a thing. They're like, Nut! Yeah. Nut! 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 nut. <laughs> Did you expect anything less? That's classic. That, oh my god. <laughs> it just writes itself, you know. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, the, the whole Orsac Narrative Universe Discord server that I'm on uh, is for people who want to go do text games and stuff like that. I I run Monster of the Week. I actually just stepped down from that just, like, literally today because of the fact that I just haven't had time recently. Somebody else has kind of taken my spot for that. I will see what happens in the future if I come back or whatever, but for the most part, they offer so many different types of games, which is, uh, you know, D&D 5e, D&D 3.5, actually, uh, Pathfinder 2e, um, the Orsac Narrative Universe, which is its own game, the, the Nut... Uh, and then there's Nut. percent chance of failure, which was made by Abstract Thought uh, on TikTok. Uh, it's mm-hmm. its own creation, and everything like that. It's a really fun game as well. Very uh, rules light and, and, and like improv heavy. And then I ran Monster of the Week as well. Uh, Mav Hatter ran his own game. I forgot what it's called now. It's been a minute. We've had a lot of additions over the past year. So, uh, but that's what I've been doing over there is just text games. Like you know, uh, you check in every couple t- couple times a day or whatever. Just Interact, um, throw your throw your text in there to say what your actions are, and that way you're not, you know, constricted to a table. And like, we're all gonna play for four hours here. You're just playing throughout the day, and you're just, it's like a constant game, and you don't have to like schedule around it. Yeah, like the game. Yeah, don't you dare, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you in thirty minutes. Okay. Uh... <laughs> so we've had a. Uh, uh... We do them. We do our Monday night magic streams, and we used to have a guy pop in pretty regularly, the Pirate Tom, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. also ran. He runs the D and D. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, but we always wanted to know a little bit more about ab- about that. So, I guess, what's it like for somebody getting into getting into a text based adventure for the first time versus you know sitting down at a table? Is it weird? Is it what's the feeling like? It's definitely weird. Uh, it's um. It's completely different than what you're used to because if you've done nothing but either live uh, table play or online table play, you're it's like, hey, let's all get together. All right, we're good. We're gathered. Okay, let's get settled. Get our jokes out. Whatever. Okay, we're gonna play. We're gonna play for a few hours. Okay, let's take a break. Then we're gonna go away from it. Then we're gonna come back. We're gonna play for a couple more hours. Whatever. Even if you're stuck to like the four hour structure that most people do, like that's it. You're just four hours. You're done. Whereas a text game is, like, and each person running their own game has their own individual rules and how they handle things. Like, for example, for me, I was doing a bare minimum of two check-ins a day. So at least twice a day, I was going in there, throwing in responses, uh, and just saying, hey, this has happened with this, and this, and this. And there's a lot of people uh, who love rolling it. Like, I had a, uh, somebody who bought a year-long package for uh, um, a solo game, where it's yeah. just them. 
and um, that's Rogue Vid. So Rogue Vid, if you see this, shout out to you. You're one of my <laughs> absolute favorite people. You have followed me. Like every Monster of the Week thing I've done, Rogue Vid has found a way to, to come along and, and traipse along. So <laughs> it's all, it's always nice having that one random person that just like gleams on to what you're doing for us. Obviously, our our, our now friend yes. Brandon Vol, friend and moderator of Vibe friend Rainbow. friend moderator TikTok. TikTok live subscriber, like he just rolled up in one of our chats one day, and like we've now gone to dinner with him on several occasions, hung out with him at conventions, played games. It's fit. It's crazy how that all works out. It it's ridiculous. Um, so more about more about this Discord server. It it is pay to join. That's right. Uh, not pay to join, pay to play. Like if you want to join in there and just uh, hang out with people and vibe, that's perfectly cool. You have every right to go in there and just read the stories. Uh, if you want to go in there and just look at everybody's games and read along, that's fine. If you want to interact, if you want to play, you gotta pay. But it's it depends on who you're going to because you know, uh, like for me, I was charging like fifteen dollars for like uh, per person kind of thing for like a month. So you pay fifteen bucks for a month, you get thirty days of just play. Uh, and so you get to go in there and it's like, um, uh, and we, we kind of like make sure that people like are having a good time. So it's like ch constant check-ins of just like, if you have any issues, tell me, I'll, I can adjust the game. And that's the cool thing about this being a day-to-day -day thing. You can adjust it on the fly and change direction. I'm like, so if you have an issue, message me. And then I go, all right, not liking this. Let's tweak that. Let's change this. And, um, it's one of those things where, uh, if you, if you want to check it out, uh, you get to come read and, and see what everything's like and see if who you vibe with, essentially. And then there's also reviews to see who's, who says what about who. And then um, after it's all said and done, if you want to go in, you are entitled to a two-week free trial for one of the games. So, like, if you want... I'm going to play Monster of the Week. You come with me, two weeks, uh, no charge, and then, like, hey, here's your two weeks. Do you want to go ahead and finish this adventure for the next two weeks, finish up the month, and then I'll charge you, like, half the price, essentially, you know, that kind of thing. Uh... And then, yeah, so it's one of those, if you don't want to, uh, to pay, you absolutely do not have to, and you can come vibe if you want. It's just, it's more of a community first than it is a business, so. That's very, that's very nice. That's it's very it's so heartwarming. Very <laughs> heartwarming, because there's not enough heartwarming stuff in the tabletop RPG community these days. A lot of discourse. <laughs> Always. Speaking of the discourse, so we, we discussed earlier, we wanted to open the podcast by asking your opinions on the conflict in Gaza. Um, we're not. We're no, no. <laughs> not. We are not. not. <laughs> nope. nope, not touching that with a 39 and a half foot pole, I can tell you that much. Not that kind of pod. Um, so we we initially, obviously, we've, we've known you, we've been a follower of yours online for the, most of the time that we've been online. Yeah. And we got to meet you for the first time at Gen Con. Gen Con. And uh, who doggy? What a <laughs> character! <laughs> <laughs> we we stayed in their Airbnb together. We had a little. We had our little group. It was a wonderful time. And and we we and, and to be fair, it wasn't that that bad. We only made love like three times. Um, he, Oh, but who? the rest of the time it was it was just raw. Yeah, dog. the rest of the times it was just fucking. Oh, like it was, yeah, just... <laughs> no, it was just. I'm glad. I'm glad that you took took the time to make the turn there. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to coax it out of people. I just want. I just want it to be natural. Right, we, we just, want to <laughs> just flow right out of the pants and then just like <laughs> right in. You know. No, this is uh, Gen Con is where I learned. Um, the difference between the online personalities of most people and like the real life personalities because online you, like you see me i keep mine i don't i don't use language i don't make inappropriate jokes or anything i keep it very like family friendly real life me does not filter very much yeah uh, so oh yeah. oh yeah i mean we, we'll curse sure that's about, that's sure. about as raw. i mean obviously our most viral video is us slapping, slapping each, each other's, other's ass, ass yeah. but um <laughs> That I forgot about that one. Yeah, that one's just a good. That one's just a good bit. That's it's not even sexual, really. It's just a good time at all round, you know. I will say there was a good amount of thirst in that video, though. Like, <laughs> you know, for for the good beginning of our TikTok careers, there was a lot of thirst coming after you. It was it was both of us. There there were a lot of people. It was on like there two thirds the, to one third with the big boy fever. It was two thirds to one third. <laughs> 
yeah um our audience is also still like half female which i also don't get but i love it great I've, I've looked at my numbers. I am like 75% guys and I'm like 25% girls. I'm just like, nah, that checks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How is it? Ours, like, the last time I, the last time I checked, um, we had to pull it for, um, for a video sponsorship. And they asked for our data and I pulled it and it was like, all, like literally split directly down the middle on TikTok, 50-50 men and, men and women. And it, yeah. I'll take it. It's not, it, I will say, I will say the target audience, not necessarily women, but it's not, not women. Yeah, we, we don't gatekeep. We're not gatekeeping here. It's no, no, just... yeah, it's, it's, it just doesn't make, like, when it comes to the community, it, the, like, when you're looking at, like, the stats and everything, you're like, I, like, for me, I see 75% guys, I'm just like, I do D&D content. That kind of makes sense, because I do mm. know, like, a lot of women in the D&D space and, and the TTRPG space, but... I know three times as many guys. So. Yeah, for every for every one, there's another three. Yeah, you know? pretty much is what it feels like. And it's like it. I, I'm not. This is, I feel like people are going to be like, "Oh, you're gatekeeping." I like, know we're just. It's an observation. I can tell you that for the for the stream that we do, um, we had when we first started off, we had two people that were, um, uh, you know, fem presenting and all that, and they, uh, you know, uh, um. We had Chelsea and and uh, uh, Catherine, and they both actually have had life has gotten in the way. They can't be in the stream for the, for the time being. They still have a, their spots always welcome. They're welcome to come back and everything. But uh, I can tell you that like when it just became just guys, I was like, we we need we need a feminine touch here. We need <laughs> we need the uh, the. <laughs> you can't you can't play D and D with just dick jokes and farts. <laughs> and... What is what is D and D if not uh, dudes and dicks? You know, I've been <laughs> D and D. I see what you did there. I've been I've been saying that for years. Or dick or dicks in dudes. D and D. Wow, wow. I'm not saying they should rebrand, but <laughs> listen, Watsy. Might... Let, let's let's consider things here, okay? All right. The official the official Watsy OnlyFans. <laughs> dick, dick and dudes. Now, where, to be fair. Like, Watsy is missing out on a lot of potential money on not doing official Watsy OnlyFans content. Like you telling me that they couldn't get official like <laughs> tiefling art and not make millions off of one post. Oh, yeah. I doubt it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would. <laughs> Watsy doesn't uh, doesn't know how to listen to its community. I think they've learned that pretty that well over true. the past That's year. True. It's really what the community has been clamoring for for years is just a nice devilish little titty. You know. Devil's Little Titty. Trademark. Trademark. Also, you know you know for f- <laughs> you know for a fact that OnlyFans is gonna get like five subscribers and four of them are going to just be copying and pasting to the wide inter- the wider internet. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> not even not even remote. That's how it works normally. Uh segue away from this horrifying I think There's we could no... spend more time on tiefling titties. All right, oh, please. What do you got we what can't... do you got to say? Well, if no one else wants to, I'm fine to move on. No, what do, what do, what do you got to say about the areolis? Anyway, segue. Hmm? All what's the nipples? You have anything to say about the nipples? It's a titty it's been a titty bit nipply outside. It's a bit titty. Okay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> you brought up you brought up the stream and uh dice soup the stream. You're playing mm-hmm. you're playing Dungeons and Dragons uh is sure. audio based. Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about that game. Who's involved? How'd you get it started? Like, what's what's where's like that? Bane? Where's Where's Harvey Dent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Harvey when it, Bane, when it comes to it. um mm. when it comes to the, the whole thing, we have Dungeons and we have Dragons. As a matter of fact, we have a Dragonborn, a couple of Dragonborn in our party. Mm. So um, you know, we always we bring the dragon every single week. Uh, no, but when it comes to this whole thing starting, um. Ron Jeremy Howard, kidding. Uh, his, <laughs> <laughs> um, R J H uh, R Jeremy Howard is his name. I still to this day don't know his first name, but I've called Dixon him Ron Dudes. Jeremy Howard this whole time. Dixon um, Dudes. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, R Jeremy Howard on TikTok. If you if you don't know him, you should know him. Go love him. Um, check out his account and everything. Uh, just this guy who he really wanted to play. He likes playing uh, D and D. He's he's a paid GM himself. And he was like, I want to do my own thing. I want to do my own show and all that kind of stuff. So he's like, I'm going to start putting a feeler out on the internet, on a TikTok. 
And so he did this, like, he only went out to, like, mutuals, I think. And so me and a bunch of people responded. He's putting out, and, um, he's putting out feelers? What's going on TikTok? And you yeah. doing a little feeler? He was doing a little feeler. Yeah. He might, he's never, he's he never tried feeling us. A mind flare. You know, a little... Uh, so <laughs> can you feel, can you come over and feel us sometimes? <laughs> That's my job, huh? Uh, so <laughs> if you insist, <laughs> uh, no. But uh, he he just put out out there saying, "Hey, who wants to play D and D? Whatever." And uh, uh, some people, me and a bunch of people, responded, and he was like, um, he he kind of handpicked a bunch of people. And he's like, "I like these people. I vibe with these people." So we all got together, uh, kind of like to in a group chat to kind of check each other out and everything. Um, and this was one of the most cohesive groups I've ever actually, like, been with, like, especially starting out. We just, we really all were, like, well, like, we all mesh really well. Our play styles, our jokes, our we don't, we're, we're all very, like, respectful players. Like, when somebody's got the spotlight, we will step back and everything like that. We don't try to do anything like that. And it's just, um, it really works well. So I've been having a blast. We've been doing it for over a year now. Um, actually, oh my gosh, well, we're we're approaching two years actually. Now that I think. Oh wow! Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah, All right. it was like April of of uh, last year, or the year before. So uh, when we started, so we we've, we've already hit a year. I know that. So I'm thinking we're I think we're I think it was April. I could be wrong. I don't know. I slept since then, and my <laughs> brain is very smooth. So um, <laughs> smooth like a baby's but, bottom. It's a smooth brain. I don't. I, there are no wrinkles in my brain. Um, anyway, yeah, it was. It's been a fun time. We've all like had a great time uh, meshing and, and uh, uh, you know having. You know, we're not meshing. We can't meet in person. But um, <laughs> oh, attitude. <God, dude. laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Twitter talk. There could be. There could be some. There could be some little meetups going on on the side. You know. <laughs> but that's one thing we, we we've kind of talked about is uh, is trouble with uh, not necessarily trouble, but like. Finding a group that you really mesh with, because mm -hmm. especially when we were talking about, like we mentioned earlier, wanting to do a, a game, a stream game or whatever, an audio mm -hmm. podcast game, doing with our friends wouldn't necessarily have been, you know, the I think what we would have seen as the as the pinnacle, yeah, because of that kind of, not everybody is a content creator or wants to be, mm -hmm. um, True. and so you know. That's that's been something we've uh we've been you know we struggled with back then is to getting getting that good group together you know yeah and it's it really is difficult because in person like home games like the vibe the vibe is different when you know that you're trying to like put on a performance effectively I mean you talk you talked about the different personality between your your on air persona versus the actual person mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and not only do you need to be aware of that in a streaming context, you also need to be aware and and purposefully making it a point to give other people the space so that the game actually flows properly. It's a very different dynamic. How how would you compare the dynamic on di uh, Dice Soup as opposed to uh, a normal game of D&D that you would play? Well, um... A lot of the games that, like, for example, I've, I've played a lot online with some random people before, and I, I haven't had, the, like, really any bad experiences, thankfully. You know, uh, there's, which is, I know kind of, like, it seems like a rarity, but at the same time, like, because I hear all these horror stories about things, like, of, of, of events and that people being that guy in the game, or, or the GM being that guy in the game, that kind of thing. But, like, um, but, like, for me, I've never come across anything like that, thankfully. Most of my games have either been in person with people I've known in person for a while or online for people who are paying to be there. So, like, they're kind of, like, people who are putting money down tend to be more into it oh, and more, that's... like, actually willing to do the right things, you know? They got skin <laughs> in the game, so it's... Yeah, they, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, I can tell you that one, the big thing about, about Dice Soup is that we all really got uh super invested with each not just each other's characters but just each other as people like we we all really care for each other there's been several times money has just been passed around between people to people like just saying like some people need help all right cool cut you, cut you a little bit of like here's some cash app or whatever i mean it just it just happens it's a common occurrence it's, it's just like nothing uh it's our own little commune uh but <laughs> <laughs> but 
Yeah. No, but uh, um, I can tell you one thing. Like, for example, uh, in the stream, I played a character named uh, Nock. He was a changeling monk. And changeling monks slash bard, because uh, I met the bard of the party. We became, like, really close friends, and I joined the Golden Grin, which is from if, if anybody who's familiar with Critical oh, yeah. Role, you know, because we do official Critical Role content. We're using, you know, um, Exandria and all that kind of stuff in our setting. Um, and uh, what happens, you know, he's part of the Golden Grin. I joined the Golden Grin with him. Uh, we became really close. And then my character, at some point, while defeating his personal big bad, uh, was hit with an item, which I never heard of before. I thought this was homebrewed, but apparently, like, uh, Jeremy brought it out, put it out of, like, somewhere I've never heard of. It's like an hourglass thing. Rams it into my chest, and this thing ages me to the point of I'm 30 days away from death. I have 30 days to live, essentially. And the only thing that can cure this is a greater restoration or a wish spell. And my character had just recently gotten two wishes from the deck of many things. So I used one of those wishes to defeat this bad guy once and for all. And what I did was I, I said, I, you know, basically took away his, um, uh, his faction as a whole and saying this faction no longer exists and all of his wealth and, and money is now dispersed amongst the people of the land. Uh, and so basically I just got everybody a tax rebate. Uh, in in the game uh, yeah, for a stimulus for the great I, people. I, of the I, game I, I cut the stemmy, man. I cut the stemmy for everybody, stimmy. <laughs> and it was for a, it was yeah. For they a all hot. got six hundred dollars for the first payment. Yeah, <laughs> that was for six months, and then <laughs> now roughly we we did the math like to what it would like be roughly like in the, the equivalent of real life. It was roughly like the cut. I cut like everyone like around ten to fifteen thousand dollars each. Uh, huh. Yeah. <laughs> and the like, worst thing is, is like in the context of all of that, people would people would just be like, oh, yeah, that's that money that I've had. <laughs> yeah. No one would be like, where the fuck did this money come from? Yeah, no one's like, been, yep, I, that's yeah, how it is. So I still haven't seen the the effects of that because my character, you know, we all left the land. We, we went to a different place. Uh, we left. I think it was I think it was Wild Mountain where we were. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, after that's all said and done, my character's still a terminal. I used that wish, I failed my role, my other wish left, and I can, and I, I didn't know that I, this is something I wasn't familiar with the condition of wishes until, um, I actually used it. You get, of course, the wish sickness and all that kind of stuff, but, like, I lost the ability to use wishes. <laughs> like, just gone. And so, my other wish that I was going to use for other purposes, either to save myself or to save somebody else, whatever, um was gone and I couldn't use it anymore. So I had resigned this character to just go ahead and die. I was contemplating just letting him go into the sunset. That very long story to tell you something important. Uh, as that character, Luca, was part of the Golden Grin, what happened is um, he had made up some of his own original songs to go with the Golden Grin and what they mean and all their hidden messages and all that. He wrote a song called The Farther Shore, which is the song to signify the death of a grinner. Um, cause he, it looked like I was going to die, which ended up didn't happening, but the song still exists nonetheless. And what happened was Tim, uh, last coin productions on TikTok and on uh, see him on, on Dice Tube every Sunday, uh, in real life wrote lyrics to a song. He recorded the song himself. He did all his backing vocals and everything. And then on top of that, he went behind my back to get all the other members of Dice Soup to record gang vocals in the reprise, and made this song a reality. If you want to hear this song, it is on our uh, Patreon, and it is on, like, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you can you get it on, like, you go to the Discord, you get the Patreon chat, it's just posted in there, ready for you to see. It is my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> no one in my life has ever written me a song. This is a, I know it's not me, but it was a character played by me, I, I, I'm this character, and all that kind of stuff. I was... I'm listening to this live on stream going, don't fucking cry. Don't cry. It could it couldn't have, the only thing that could have been worse is if he had started playing uh Leaves from the Vine. I would have been a <laughs> sobbing mess. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what I love about this group, is that we do stuff like that for each other. That was like the most important thing that's ever happened to me in a D D game. Period. So that is, yeah. That's that's Something that people wish could happen. 
for them. Mm -hmm. Like when exactly. they when they're able to cast it still. Right. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right knock and like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah with all with all of the stream stream games all of the all of the you know content that's come out in the last what eight years now oh yeah that that has been like oh we've seen like you know really cool moments on critical role and 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 dimension 20 and all these where these big things happen and you get to experience that, and doesn't it just make you hate that other people are talented? I know, right? Like, fuck those people. <laughs> I'm, uh, not, I, I'm not writing a fucking thing for someone else. You kidding me? I can, I can strum a couple chords, and that's about it. <laughs> that's all you're getting. <laughs> but that was like ass. that was the beautiful thing about it. Is like it was like this guy's super talented, and he directed that talent towards me, and I'm like, I cannot equate this present back. Like, I cannot... <laughs> I'm not going to be able to reverb this at all in any way. I can I can write you a lovely note. Uh, <laughs> let me let me give you this IOU real quick. <laughs> I'll write up play guitar and write you a song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write you a song to play for me again. But it'll be about you. Okay. You didn't quite hit the notes properly. I like you didn't really... You didn't really get the entire grandeur like, of the situation. Just... Can you can you imagine if I received that and went back to him and just like, I it was it was it was good. It was a great uh, first draft. Was... It was like first draft. It really, it really was. We're gonna, first we're gonna try, man. We so can... I marked it up. I I mocked it up in Mario. What's the Mario? Uh, the Mario Music app. Oh Mario's my Mario God. Music Maker. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> that's wild that's wild um <laughs> oh my god mario music maker of all the fucking things you weren't ready for that reference i was that way going in the way back machine <laughs> um way back machine. oh yeah so in in our in our times we want we also wanted to do a streamed game for a myriad of reasons that didn't work we also kind of came to the conclusion at least in our opinion that there's a million and a half different there are live play games that are going on and it it's a very saturated market at the time and i mean obviously i'm sure you guys are doing it largely cuz you are enjoying it and, oh yeah and you it's really great, our game oh yeah know. and you have a great closeness with one another but what what is your in your experience as a group has really helped differentiate yourselves from the market and if someone else were to want to do their own actual play, live play of D and D, Vampire the Masquerade, whatever. What would they? What would you recommend them do to try and and set themselves apart and give them a little bit of a leg up on the comp? Um, I would probably offer um a Patreon where you sell your loots. That will definitely get you attention. That I mean, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what we're missing. I'm telling you, when we first started, I thought we were gonna open an Only Beards. You know. Just, <laughs> uh, okay. Here, okay. Side. Quick sidebar. Go, okay. We're here. side open. We're gonna go inside. Okay. How many players? How many? How many people are part of are part of your stream? How many people? Uh, so. There are eight uh, people total. And two of them, like I said, are kind of away from the table right now because the because of life. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can get one of them back soon. We're when the talks have possibly be able to do that because you know work schedules, real life, real life gets in the way a lot. So uh, you are also familiar with the uh, the American firefighter. The American firefighter. Yes, a, a, a firefighter. Person oh, just a firefighter. Yeah. A, a firefighter in America. Where yeah, one of truck Dalmatian exactly right. exactly where one of their wonderful fundraising operations is of course the fireman's calendar mm. <laughs> fireman fireman like uh, 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 so so what I'm all I'm saying is the each of us do two the, months you got six the dice two months. the dice soup uh uh. Oh my God! What's the what's the name where you're, like you get the sexy photography done of yourself? Boudoir. 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 Your. <laughs> It'd be a dudeoir, but you know. Dudeoir. Dudeoir. <laughs> the the dice soup dudeoir calendar might 
might be the million dollar project. I'm just gonna you can have that one for free. Yep. Have at it. I will I will cut you a check for five dollars if it pays off. So. Send us send us a calendar each and uh, a guest signed. and a guest appearance on on the on the stream we can <laughs> we can virtual in. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> No, uh, in, in all reality, uh, for people who want to do this or whatever, um, it, it, what really helps is having a good support system because if you, like, for me, I've, I've wanted to do this for years. I've wanted to do, like, my own show or podcast or whatever, whatever have you. If you have it just by yourself, that's fine if you are able, if you're talented. I'm not. Uh, so, uh, like, I, <laughs> I cannot, I don't know how to get all this stuff together, so I have to rely on the fact that if I get enough people with the same common goal uh, together, then we might all stumble towards that goal. Uh, mm-hmm. No, but having like a good support system of people who actually have a, have the same goal in mind really helps because you you support each other, you encourage each other. You're like, it, basically what it is like if you t- if you show me if you hang out with um, you know six people who are negative, I'll show you the the seventh person. It's you. Like that's who it's that's what's yeah. going to happen. Is the fact that. You are who you hang out with, and thankfully for these people, I really enjoy hanging out with them. We are all very positive each other. We help each other to kind of go towards that goal. Now, as far as setting yourself apart, it's a D and D podcast. It is going to be very difficult to do that because there's oh, so yeah. many of them. Oh, yeah. I recommend. I was actually thinking about doing <laughs> Dungeons and Diners, like where it was like we would play a game while our Dungeons and Dinner is what it was, where we play a game while somebody's preparing a meal in real time, like next <laughs> okay. to us. <laughs> Dragons, <laughs> diners, and dungeons. <laughs> we have to have Guy Fieri uh, GM it. Uh, just... I will spike. I will. I will get frosted tips and spike my hair for that project. <laughs> I will frost the to... crap out of my tips. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and not just my hair tips. <laughs> You're ready to shave everything else besides the goatee? <laughs> I'd be willing to do that. All right. right. All yeah, right. We can, we can <laughs> make that. We can make that. Our Halloween costumes are going to be this oh, year. God. Today, in the land of Exandria, in the oh land, <laughs> in the land of the Dwindalian Empire, <laughs> we're going. To... I'm going to be visiting a, a little spot that serves great kebabs. <laughs> this place is really known for its axe beak burger, and it's going to be awesome. And it's like axe beak. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Like, just some obscure, like, have you ever had a Jurassic steak? Not like this, you haven't. And it just... <laughs> I love, I love Guy Fieri's, um, like, uh, cadence. On what, did, what did, what did he ever do to people? You know? Nothing. Same thing. Like, he, he did nice Same. things for everyone. What did, <laughs> like, Guy Fieri never did anything to anyone. You, you wouldn't know, like, Nickelback didn't do anything to anybody. Nope. Creed didn't do anything to anybody. People are just clowning on these people for no reason. and Because it's and funny. That's all it comes down to. Here's the thing. Yeah, Guy Fieri, uh, he actually has done good things. Actively. for for Fantastic person. Oh, yeah. yeah. The people, the Food Network, uh, how people understand food. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's not Bobby Flay. He's, like, donated a bunch of money and, yeah. like, helped out a bunch of, like, struggling businesses that had fantastic product. And yep. he's not, Exactly. He's not Bobby Flay who goes in and is like, let's see if I can cook this person's meal better than they can. <laughs> Poppy Flay yeah, is the guy that when he walks by your station, he like knocks the plate out of your hand. <laughs> you fucking nerd, pick that up, pick that up, pick that up right. off the ground, you fucking loser. <laughs> is that a Niswa salad, punk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that that is the vibe for the other food cooking D and D live play that we yeah, do. Of course, where we're we're role playing as chefs in like a tavern mm. or something, and we're constantly trying to one up each other and just like knocking the fucking curry out of their fucking hands, and it goes all over the place. Like, clean your fucking station, you filthy pig! You absolute <laughs> donkey! You donkey! See, I was—I've gonna... actually—I have a character in my in my homebrew world with like my uh, the people I'm doing the, the podcast with soon, like our own personal project thing. Our home game that we never recorded, which we probably should have, because that's where all the memes were. We memed the crap out of that game. We made so many jokes mm-hmm. that were memeable, but we didn't record any of it for some reason. Uh, but yeah. that one had a character named Jordan Camsley, 
and he was just that he's my world's version of Gordon Ramsay. And uh so <laughs> I had him go on the ship and he's like he's like, You have no passion. Right? You're you have passion. nothing, right? <laughs> you what? need to have passion, like a fire under your ass, so that you can go out there and make fantastic meals, like I know you fucking can! <laughs> and just like, he <laughs> gets really in his face. <laughs> and well, okay. all over my keyboard. <laughs> quick sack, quick sack, worth it, worth it. Worth what it. was this character's name again? Clamshell? Jordan Camsley. Camsley. It should have been, it could have, it should have been like clam, like, I. Some something some allusion to like a clam shell and then be like a turtle and then you got the shell and you can, <laughs> and like, like 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 fucking uh, like a dick in cold water just like up in there you know <laughs> right up a, in. I have a turtle character uh, named um, uh, Gareth Barrelback and essentially he asks he he goes to like he enjoys his lettuce and uh, he, he asks absolutely everybody if they're a guard he's like all right man he's like you're not a guard are you. You know you have to tell me, right? You're not the guard. You have to tell me. <laughs> he asks that to everybody, and like multiple times, like throughout knowing you, you go mm-hmm. leave and come back. He like, so you're not a guard, right? You know mm-hmm. you have to tell me, right? Oh, like, no, it's just kind just, of his thing. That's not real. That's that's just uh, that's just something that they say on stage. You know, yeah. that's all. <laughs> that, that's thespian propaganda, man. That is thespian propaganda. Right. So you're not a guard, right? <laughs> just like, keeps yeah, you're it not up. Totally. <laughs> so you're saying no. <laughs> yeah, and then we they made I I named him Gareth, and then other people made a joke that his name was kind of like Garth, like 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 from Wayne's World. So Wayne's World, yeah. I made another character who's like a little like humanoid rat person, and I named him Wern. And so like instead of so it's Gareth and Wayne and Wern instead of Wayne and Garth. <laughs> Party on Wern. <laughs> Party on. Yeah, I just I go with the meme. I go where the meme is. I just. There was another character that was recently. He talks for like like Boomhauer. I, I named him Boombauer. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, we need to move. We need to move. On. So right. yeah, I know that's my fault. All right. <laughs> no, we, that's what this. Th- that's what bonus uh, bonus action is all about. Yeah, just we're just vibing. The randos. We're just vibing. This isn't a. This isn't a, your main action. You know, this, this isn't, isn't the, your attack. This isn't the Randy podcast where oh, we're gonna talk about three D printing and like and like oh, good good player behaviors and like learning ooh, to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, a friend of my wife's made this and like I, he just he's like, hey, I print three D printed this for your kids, and she's like, right? Kids? Yeah, the kids. Yeah, they'll see that. <laughs> they'll see it once. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we love we love Randy. It was wonderful having him on. But this is definitely this is definitely more my vibe. <laughs> this is this is this is my level of podcasting. So <laughs> it's really where I my niche. Yeah. Yes. So this is a complete non sequitur, and sure. I'm only bringing this up simply because I know that I'm I, I probably am going to get a visceral reaction from you. Twelve and a half inches. Oh, so was that a different question? Barely eleven. You had a subway sub recently? It's disappointing. It is disappointing. (laughs) disappointing. Like Bearded's penis. He's he's very he's very overselling the penis. He has way more penis. Well, so okay. I'm I was listening to a different podcast and I played this earlier for Sam and (gasps) the gentleman on this podcast. He when he goes to bed, he does what he calls Winnie the Poohing it, which is you know. Basically, sure. imagine a person who who sleeps nude, but then puts a full T-shirt on. Full and there. I don't know about you as a large person, but myself as a large person, the thought of not having adequate clothing cover for all the various places where sweat and various other things collect sounds horrifying to me. And yeah. they have had multiple people write into that show. And multiple people have been like, yeah, we tried it, and dude's a fucking psychopath. <laughs> Bro, bro's lost his marbles, and I don't... He's, he does not know how to function as a human being. No, <laughs> no, and I, it honestly ruined my day. Like, it, like, it ruined my day. And Did I, you try it? No. Why the fuck would I try that? Uh, well, you said it ruined Why your day. I, I don't know if you like went for it. No, the there. knowledge, the knowledge that a man Just can behave in that manner. Yeah, <laughs> bro's got a fucking wife. 
<laughs> and she's just like, and she's like, yeah, well, he just he sleeps how he wants You're to sleep. You're cool like, with him being like this. Like, first yeah. of all, you knew this going into it, and then chose to marry him anyway. Uh, offensive, rude, and offensive. I saw. Um, there was a radio show or something that it was a wife calling it. It was like the whole show was like confessing. Uh, how stupid you were at some point, like knowledge you learned was not true, that kind of thing. Mm. And his wife called in, she said, my husband told me when we first got married, the reason he snores is because he lays on his back, and so his testicles cover his asshole, and he it causes a vacuum, and he it makes, <clears throat> makes that noise, right? Um, so, to prevent him from snoring, she would cup him. And she did that for a few years before she found out that's not true. Um, I mean, what is love? <laughs> what is love if not a woman willing to cup your balls at night so that you don't snore? My question is, how does she find out? Like, she just, she's like, no, Betty Lou, you don't have to, you don't need to get him some procedure. You don't need to have, you know, just cup his balls. And Betty Lou's like, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> the, the, the she's talking to her friend yeah. just trying to give some friendly advice and she's like what do you do every night <laughs> you know you know that the human body is not like every hentai anime and it's not just a direct tube from one to the other like it's got a lot of there's a lot going on in there you can't vacuum seal the uh, whole to fucking be fair, humans are essentially a walking crazy straw like oh, yeah. if you like there is a tube it just takes a lot of different paths <laughs> yeah true <laughs> i don't think connor's okay with this i don't like that one either <laughs> i don't like that one either i don't like that one either since we're <laughs> since we're on the subject of fuck shit um yeah sure <laughs> one other one other thing and this was brought up by one of my new co-workers who recently started working at my job she me even. she full with her with her with her full chest with her full gusto, everything in her, every fiber of her being, we were talking about sushi, and I was like, "Oh, I like, I like sushi." And she's like, "I mean, I, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy like tuna, I guess, but it's really just kind of a condiment for me." Tuna is a condiment. To which, to which I said, "I'm sorry, you mean, you mean like how like tuna is like a topping on sushi?" And she's like, "No, fish is like just a condiment to me." I'm like, "What? What?" The fuck are you saying? I don't think you understand how words work. <laughs> no, no, that that's what I I verbatim said that to this woman. And I looked her I looked her in her face and I said, "What are you talking about? A condiment goes on to something else." She's like, "Yeah, like sushi." I'm like, "No." <laughs> what are you garnishing with sushi? Like <laughs> it's a a condiment colloquially is a sauce. Right. Yeah. And it's one. It's one thing if she was like, "Oh, I've got like there's like this fish sauce kind of thing that I like." Yeah. Put it's like a condiment. Yeah. Like, okay, that's also not a condiment, but that's at least not a stretch. You know, you're like, not I, far off at least that point. Like I could reach there from the position of proper condiment. I was getting real worried that you were going to be like, "Yeah, she just takes a turkey sandwich and then takes some canned tuna and just that's and then." I made that, I made that, and she was like, I mean, if that's what you want to do, and I'm like, that doesn't offend you? <laughs> that doesn't... <laughs> what? How, how are you not rioting in the streets right now at the fact that I just said this? <laughs> I was so mad. I was enraged at this woman. I'm like, what are you... I, like, lost the ability to talk, and she's just laughing hysterically, and then the other people in the room are just looking at her horrified, and I'm like... Well, <laughs> In what universe is this okay? We need... So what I'm saying is we need to use our platform as D&D content creators <laughs> to gatekeep certain kinds yeah. of people. Yeah, because no, you know people what? really listen to us. You know? I, will, I will happily gatekeep anybody that thinks a fucking fish is a condiment from any of my hobbies. My life, really, <laughs> even. I will gladly... Uh, gatekeep anybody who thinks that uh, people asking questions about the D&D world are uh, tourists. Did you guys mm. see that whole thing going on? Oh god. I didn't see the original post ever, but I did see plenty of plenty of our mutuals responding to it. Oh and, god. Bro, uh, dude got ratioed hard. If you go to his original video, like 200 some likes, 3,000 comments. <laughs> 
That's so, fucking impressive. If like, you it, want to, if you want to see the original video, look at my response video. I tagged both the original person that was stitched and then the person who stitched him, and then you can see both videos and like get full context. But yeah, bro was like went on a tangent that was incorrect, like factually incorrect. Well, 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 on. So what? <laughs> so he, he's saying that someone that just G is just for those who aren't weren't uh, break. Well, so what happened here was that uh, the the main person I've forgotten their their username or their or their like you know screen name or anything like that. Butthole number one had a question about specifically Baldur's Gate and how Watsi handles uh, the uh, the gif the githyanki you know because like if I'm assuming you guys have played Baldur's Gate at this point. I have yeah. I'm okay, familiar. so the the at, you know the one of the one of the main characters that you can add to your party and everything like that, you know, is a gif person and so. Uh, the, very standoffish, very like we, proud race, like we are, like we are our own people. We hate everyone else, and you're beneath us, kind of thing. Like that's just how the gift. Like, well, that, then that's just. I know very little about the Githyanki or the Githserai, and so this person who is not new to D and D has been playing for years. Just had a question about Baldur's Gate and how they handle gift. I was like, I thought they were supposed to be this, that, the other, and just asked a question. So then, random dude who was in a, in his own video without a shirt but wearing a hat. Uh, yeah, yeah sleeping thing. with a shirt on and no pants. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's, Carry that's on. the guy who Winnie the Pooh's it, okay? Right? That's the guy who full poo bears it. He, he full poo bears it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, he gets so all the fucking poo on... particles in his goddamn bed, too. Sorry. Carry on. And... Uh... <laughs> For, and I don't mean to, to demean anybody who, who has a hard time growing facial hair. However, it's always the dude who looks like they cut up pieces of carpet and taped it to their upper lip that are saying stuff like this. It's always those guys. I don't get it. Um, but he comes on, and by the way, side note, his screen name, I know, I remember his, Filthy Knife Ear, which is a, you know, mm. derogatory term for elves. Elves, yeah. And talking to this very obviously black creator uh and calls him a tourist he's like leave it to this guy a tourist and it's like the, he gives it the hard r <laughs> i feel like he wanted to say another word with a hard people were calling him out a lot like long arms mcgee the even said i've never heard anybody say tourist, tourist with, a, with a hard er like that the hard r <laughs> tourist that, like he that went I will, in and I'm like, that's a fucking finesse of the language right there to get like, your fucking I'm just point going, yeah Jeez. and so anyway he, he comes in and he's just like leave it to this guy a tourist to not know anything he's like wow. so yeah uh the gif there are uh these and he stump he, he set, proceeds to speak for three minutes straight without saying one thing correct it's fantastic uh, it's like I've never seen someone waste so much oxygen in such a short span of time. Mm -hmm. Like, um, that's like that could have been fucked. That could have gone to a tree, right? Like that, that could that carbon dioxide you wasted could have gone to a tree somewhere. But you know what? Yeah. You wasted it. Yeah. Um, or just go to, <laughs> just go to any Airbnb during Gen Con, and there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of tree food being made. You know <laughs> If we, if we had filled that place with trees, oh man, they would have been a fucking vibe. Like jungle. We, we get we get out there, we're like, they're a lot greener than when we got here. Like they right? were kind of dying when we first got them. <laughs> right. Like <they're... laughs> I gotta I gotta say, this is we haven't watered them. Like <laughs> another another side an, another sidebar here. Waking up one of the mornings of Gen Con to a like mostly shirtless cisco frying bacon and then an also shirtless you watching him fry bacon <laughs> was that was, that was one of that was one of my core memories from gen con <laughs> hey listen some shirtless man was grilling was was frying up some or like you know um griddling up some meat for me i was going to be present for the show <laughs> like we, okay and like for those of you that don't know who cisco is man's attractive <laughs> Bro, like, like, I've has I've, the chest tattoo and pulls it off too. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pull up, pull off more. Go check Please. him out on. Roll, <laughs> go check him out on uh, role playing degenerate. Yeah, yeah. There you can clearly see okay. his dude. He, God, what a man. Okay, we've yeah, gone. We've gone on several. Okay, we need to go back through several sidebars here. Yeah, I'm not sure. We've gone through. Se this is kind of like a Munchkin game. We've gone through. I don't know how many doors, and I really don't yeah. know which one was the first one. Too many doors um, have been kicked down. I, I don't. 
I don't even want to try and retrace this. So, you were saying. No, 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 yeah, uh, the whole thing with the, the controversy, it was just that that guy came on, uh, really said nothing for, like, three minutes straight, so uh, everyone, like, everyone and their sister, like, my, I'm pretty sure I have dead relatives who made a TikTok account just so they can make a video on this guy. Like, just like, are you kidding me? No. Um, I must have not been on TikTok today, because I did not see that. that. Dude, that's been, that was like a week and a half ago. Roughly, oh, yeah. something like that. A lot and of in the equals. internet world, that's basically 500 years. You, you're already lost. Like, yeah, there's, just... been, there's wow. been three other memes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Another racist person saying tourist. The critic. very gosh. hard. Like, it was one of those, like, I, I just know you wanted to say another word, and you didn't. You, you held back. <laughs> I mean, good. That's, that's an improvement, obviously. We can applaud I mean, that. We can apply I, that. I will. I will say the fact that he didn't say the word he may have wanted to say is good. Uh, the, the, let's, let's work on the uh, why you wanted step, to say it part. Step in the right direction. <laughs> <or going. laughs> okay. The road is the road is long, dark, and full of sharp shards of glass. But we took the first step. You know. Well, but uh, yeah, no that that whole thing. Everybody came out of the woodwork and was like, like, and I even said in my video, it was like, you know. It takes, I've been in a creative funk for like a while. I just mm. haven't been posting videos at all. Like, really, right before Gen Con to like now, I just haven't posted as regularly as I used to, essentially. Yeah. And I was like, e you know, you've done something when you've woken my Eldritch ass from the ground. Yeah. Like, I am, <laughs> when I have risen from the ashes, like, what did you say? <laughs> you say tourist with what intonation? <laughs> You yeah, put tuna on what like a, kind of sandwich? There's a there's a new terms being thrown around D and D TikTok now, where oh God. people who like there's people who think that tourists, you know, people who are just like just doing D and D because Baldur's Gate's popular and all that, and Critical Role's popular and all that. And there's other people who call people like me and Long Arms McGee and whoever innkeepers. Apparently, they're the people who take in the tourists and welcome them and and like give them commodities and stuff like that, like. The person who's like, hey, come on in, enjoy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's, you, you know the characters yeah. in D&D games that everybody loves. Exactly. Like, there's very rarely been a time where you're like, let's just, you know, hate this innkeeper. No, it's usually the person who's saving your bacon. Literally. So. <laughs> or, cooking it, or cooking it to you, or unbuttoned. Shirtless. Uh, shirtless in the morning. Anyway, we've been going, <laughs> we've been going like through way, way too many sidebars. Bearded, this has been this has been a wonderful conversation, and uh, <laughs> I would I would love I think a drunk cast sometime a drunk be, cast that would oh, be oh gosh you do not want that from me yeah you, yeah <laughs> we do yeah we do I think you, you want that <laughs> but for those that want to find you and the activities that you partake in where can they go uh well any any social media you find me on whether that be Twitter Instagram TikTok um. I'm on threads, apparently. I found someone gave me a link to Sky Blue. I've never actually been on there. I thought you were about to say to Skynet, my and I'm like, oh, fuck, we're at that point already in the time. I'm on Skynet! <laughs> I will be the first Terminator. <laughs> I am Arnold. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> any of those social medias that I have, you will, you will see, and, uh, even on my Discord, you will see a link tree. Uh, link that you can follow to find uh, links to absolutely everywhere, several projects, projects I'm a part of and everything. Uh, so if you want to see me on Dice Soup, that's on Twitch at uh, uh, Once Upon a D20. Um, and then there is, uh, you know, for, of course, my own personal stuff that I got going on with my Start Playing Dot Games. Want to book a game with me? Great, fantastic. Uh, I also have side projects that I'm starting. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I'm going to go from here right now to go over to a friend's house to record a live play. Because there's not enough of those. We have we no. need more. No. Uh, supplies are running low. Uh, so <laughs> they really are. They really are. <laughs> the, the warehouses the are, barren. are getting dry. The barren. fields have been burned. Indy, Indy <laughs> has been putting relics into this warehouse. It's so barren. You know? <laughs> Top men. Uh, so. Men. <laughs> Uh, but also doing my own thing. I, uh, there, I'm really I'm trying to get a uh, audio. Uh, episodic podcast going about a st original story of mine. I'm also writing the book about that character, like like a full on novel. Um, I don't know how to say no to things. Oh, the the tism takes over sometimes, and uh, just it really drives me home. Uh, so, 
But uh, yeah, no, I got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in the fire. Let's see. What, let's see what falls out. Let's see what actually creates more fire. I don't know. I try not to start forest fires, but if I if I do, so be it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, only you. Only you can prevent it. Only you can prevent it. Well, thank you very much for spending this hour with us. Uh, I'm sorry that we interrupted your dinner uh, for this uh, podcast. Yeah, we're fine. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's McDonald's. You know, it's super. I'm not gonna lie. Super... <laughs> well, sponsored. Kidding. Not sponsored by McDonald's. We're not. <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just don't forget uh, to add your tuna to your burger. Yeah. It's a condiment. Add it. Just squirt condiment. it right up on there. Uh, and don't forget to take the tuna juice as a shot afterwards. Yeah. It's probably just, good for your health. Just have, a, have like, no understanding of words whatsoever. You, like, you have a tea. You're like, this really needs a garnish, don't you think? <laughs> like, just... <laughs> The aroma, the aroma of canned fish is just <laughs> this, delightful. This just for some reason, I feel like adding some kind of protein to this. Like, like no, mm, what do you? Like what? a nice, like meaty, like like salty <laughs> chew. You Cut know, up pieces of steak. Throw it in my tea, please. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I feel like that's a good note to end on. <laughs> Love a stinger at the end. <laughs> Indeed. Throw some steak in your tea, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>